Because you've you had the travel bug so early and you've done extensive traveling around the world, I mean, I think you've been on almost every continent except <laughs> maybe Antarctica. Uh, what advice would you have for Americans who travel when it comes to cultural understanding? Expect that it is going to be completely different and welcome that. And welcome that. Why else would you travel? Why go to McDonald's in Rome when you've got Rome there? (laughs) (laughs) I had a Japanese teacher in high school who said something to me, Mrs. Purdue. She said, it's not weird, it's different. And different is okay. Exactly. For the United States of America, how do we get more of this, it's just different, and this understanding and opening ourselves up to other ways of living and thinking? Well, the lack thereof is at the heart of much of our division, isn't it? You know, certainly when we talk about issues around Black Lives Matter and treatment of Muslims and treatment of Hispanics, of the, the China flu or virus, all of these things are built on ignorance a lack of of knowledge, a lack of ability to recognize that it's just different, it's not weird. We are in an age when a non-white majority uh, is about to occur. It's it's already happened in the, I think it's under nine or 10 years old in that generation. It's now a majority non-white population. Um, And so that obviously means the nation will be. And I think, you know, much of what we're seeing is that last gasp of control and influence and and, uh, defensiveness. And explain what American exceptionalism is. Sure. It's this idea that we are the symbol. So it's the idea that we are the city on the hill that is a shining beacon of light for the world, of freedom and opportunity. And we, you know, at many, many, many levels, that's true. I mean, we have, as a nation, always been that place that other people want to come and for opportunity, et cetera. But it also, taken too far, means that we can do whatever we want to. Anything we do is right. 